buy solid cars instead of that sports car. And then the next one is belonging. We buy to be considered a certain group or to be accepted by a certain group. That is the entirety of every YA that you've read, right? And a few that you've written, right? That's one group. The second group is power. We want to push out one of these qualities that we think makes us worth your attention. Does that make sense? Right. We buy things that we hope that when you, another person sees it, they're like, oh, there is something, who is this person? Maybe I should look at them, right? And that goes from everything to cars to edges. We spend a lot of money to make sure. <laughs> We spend a lot of money to make sure people <laughs> think that we're good. <laughs> the next thing is hero worship. There is something in somebody else that we want to emulate for ourselves. And this may be a private thing. It may be a cosplay thing. That's why a lot of people cosplay, right? Because they want to emulate something wonderful. Um, during the cosplay yesterday, I saw a Western Wonder Woman. She was Wonder Woman with the boots and the lasso rooting, tooting, and shooting. And that appealed to me because I'm not only country, but I love Wonder Woman. And I see what she was trying to emulate. Right? That's the reason why we buy things. And so, when we think about our universes, on one level, we want to tell a good story. And we want to talk about, um, our people, what they need. Isn't that how we plot? What is the great need? What is the goal, right? And what they, the skills they require. But in the end, they are always trying to fill a need, right? And so how do we give that to them in our stories? How do we, f no, that's, a, that's um, I'm sorry. I should also say that I really encourage you to speak out and speak up. So if you raise your hand, if somebody has an answer, I'll come to you, feel Donahue style. <laughs> what, what, what are the things that we do to fulfill the needs of our characters in our books? <laughs> well, sometimes we create more problems for them to realize what they do really need and as opposed to what they think they need. I said, I was just going to say we beat the hell out of them. Yes, we do. <laughs> but don't we take something away first? We offer them belonging in the end. Yes. And a new normal. But we take something away. Something that they think they need. Right? Um, think about um, Thor. He lost Mjolnir, and he got back, and he thought that's what he needed. He needed this hammer. No, you needed to sit up there and realize that you are a leader in and of your own self. Right? We need these things. We have them form groups. We put them in a team or make them fight to get on a team or get kicked off of a team, right? They have to go and acquire some kind of magical item, right? All right, good. Now that we have the basics down, let's talk merch. <laughs> For the, um, for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to refer to merch and define it as the products that characters within your world partake or use in order to achieve their goals, satisfy needs. Okay? And this is different from like swag, which is um, created and given out to potential customers. Okay. We do like those things, but this is not that subject. And there's also products that explicitly talk about the actual product we're offering, our book series, our book universe. Right? Um, main examples of that would be Harry Potter, and the t-shirt says Harry Potter. Merchandise is different. Merchandise are in-universe. So, Phil Donahue again. Give me an example of an in-universe product that gives the characters and or you the feeling of belonging. I'm going to go 
to her first because she's over here. Well, for Harry Potter, be wands. Wands? That's good. How does that work? Um, it gives the magical power to the wizards and witches in the world, and then for you, you get to pretend that they're the wizards. That's correct, but they also do one other thing. Remember, it's very specific to that person, remember? Yes, it's, it's, it's specific to each and every one. And so, if you think you're feeling a little bit like Snape, what do you do? Exactly, you buy a Snape wand. Because there are qualities of which, other than being Alan Rickman, I cannot think of. <laughs> right? Nobody, no, nobody can be Alan Rickman. But if there's something you want to emulate, or maybe that ACDC back in black vibe that he's always rocking, then yes, you're gonna want something that satisfies the hero worship need. What was your answer? I was just thinking in my last series, there was a grandmother throughout who was always baking a recipe of hers or even a small recipe book of her recipes would work. I like how you think. <laughs> what do recipe books do in terms of where we are in life and in our character's world. What do those recipe books do? Well, recipes are normally a family thing, so it makes you part of the family. Sense of belonging, sense of security in your community. Is this starting to make sense now? Okay, other examples of in-character aspects that gives folks a sense of belonging. I was just gonna add to the recipe thing, it lets you sit down with the family and, and eat what they're eating. Yes, it's, it has a community aspect to it. Most of the meetings that I've had, no, don't apologize. Uh, most, of the, most of the best meetings and the most, best connections have been over with food and booze. Am I lying? No. Oh. All right then. Houses in Harry Potter or cabins in Percy Jackson? Yes. I will not give J.K. Rowling another cent of my money, but I will wear a Ravenclaw gear until I die. I am Navy and Sever all day long. Why? Because it plugs in to the view of myself, power, that I am intelligent, right? I'm sharp. And unlike Slytherin, I don't get caught. <laughs> so let's switch over to another thing. Um, hero worship. Give me something in terms of in-universe that is an example of hero worship and merch that is related to that. Oh, I was gonna say action figures, but you're actually saying in-universe? They do have uh, um, action figures in-universe, yes. Well, I mean, that, like, buying an action figure is a way to identify with the character. Yes. Um, I would give you an example of, anybody plays video games? Are y'all familiar with Fallout? Mm -hmm. What's one of the collectibles? <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> Vital cast of money. Bobble. Exactly. And did you know you can buy all those bobbleheads in real life? How do I know? <laughs> because I'm expensive. Saver. Yes. I've always wished I could pull off the long black coat that Spike wears on Buffy. Or the leather jacket. Oh. Um, yes, in the Matrix. Oh, what is that hacker video game? Um, okay, it just left. I'll remember again. Aiden's jacket in that video game by Ubisoft that I cannot remember right now. I wanted that jacket so bad, but it was too small for me. Right? <laughs> But it was hero worship, right? Are we starting to get ideas now? Okay, my stories are set in 1970, and there's a lot of retro cars, a, maybe a keychain with a retro car on it. Yes, keychains, but why not a full-on model? I said I'm all about that bag, didn't I? Are we, is this starting to make sense to you now? 
why I'm talking about world building in terms of building your merch. Because, and it's important because we want to think about this. And I'm walking to the back so all these people can actually see me too. I'm also talking to you about this because the bridge between thinking about it and actually making it is over the waters of imposter syndrome. And you will at some times think, oh my God, that's a great idea. Oh, um, um, one other thing. What about sports jersey? I have several of them. I love, I love hockey jerseys because they're big and broad. And I have several Monster Hunter teams in my universe. And they all have logos. They all have um, uniforms. And they all have the colors. And if you are a fan of Stopgap, and they're red, white, and blue, or Crypto Liqueur with their winged um, Colt revolver, right? or the Stone Man, you can buy that merch. Because I want you on a level to feel safe. Feel that you can meet your needs within my books. But to get there, I have to answer the question, who am I to sit there and give you that? You have a question? Oh, no, I was gonna give an example. Yeah, Can, <clears throat> there's Kennedy Ryan, she's an African-American contemporary romance writer, mm -hmm. and one of her books was about a rapper and the love interest they met on, on a Ferris wheel, and she, when she released her box set, like a hundred bucks, if, if they paid a hundred bucks, they got a poster print of like a carousel with the rap lyrics like written on it and she sold out of it like. Oh yeah, um, I was working on a comic book for Grim Liver and they actually released an album because it's within what he could do. So tell me. Who wants to develop merch? Great. Who actually has an idea? Line up, please. Line, line up in front of the mic. <laughs> because what we're going to do here is we're going to workshop them. Right? We're going to workshop it because what Craig was saying, know what you want to get done. And what I want done is everybody who engages with me to leave out of there fired up to do something that's going to add income. All right? Lars, let's hear it, baby. Okay, so I write novels of the American Revolution. I have in the past written for the Journal of the American Revolution a series of articles uh, that detail some of the recipes of the time. Right. So. I'm gonna pull those in and turn them into a cookbook. Great. Um, are you also going to um, show videos about how those are made? Like the guy who, do you know, the, the meals and the cartoons and books and somebody makes them? I suppose I could do that. You could do that, <laughs> but just think about it. Yeah, yeah. That's a thought. <laughs> when, you, when are you planning on having your recipe book out? Well, my thought, I, I've been planning this all along and my thought was when I finish the series, so I can do kind of a, a compendium cookbook here, all the recipes from the, that you saw in the books. Oh, so the recipes are also in the books? Yeah, there you yeah. go. All the food's in the books. It's like a cozy, but with war. Yeah, and, 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 with, and with food that none of us want to eat. I mean, right. we're, talking, we're talking blood pudding, you know? <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Yeah. What's your name, friend? I'm John. John? I write urban fantasy. Good. Um, my first book is called The Last Angel Warrior, and um, in the first book, my main character um, has a family heirloom, which is the crest, which is uh, a necklace with a stone. Are you on wearing it. your merch now, sir? It's not, but um, I realized that I had a necklace, so I picked it up instinctively. <laughs> <laughs> why, why? Why aren't you wearing? Why aren't you wearing your own merch, sir? Um, actually, I am wearing my own merch. Uh, my face mask is. Uh, my character, which says I'm not the good guy in the story. <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing this because the camera falls on me. Come up here. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 
Jeff. Oh, okay, you can take it down. <laughs> I'll stay here until you tell me to. Okay. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay, so um, the crescent. Yes, the um, crest of the angel warrior mm -hmm. uh, is what uh, he has, and I. The crest of the angel warrior is what he has, and I will uh, eventually be designing something that I can mass produce. And as you're designing, you're going to be sharing it with your folks to, in, to increase yes. engagement and increase incitement? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I love one of those. Send me a link and I'll, and I'll send you money for that. Because, okay, and, and let, me, let me tell you what's just happened here. What just happened here is that I saw something that connected with me on a level that's so deep. It's something that I used to find myself, right? Mm -hmm. I am not the good guy in this story. That helps when someone you're trying to be yourself and somebody else is like, well, why aren't you doing it that way? Because fuck you. <laughs> well, you should be nice. You should shut the fuck up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> What's your name? Um, my name is Natalie Davenport. Hello, uh, Natalie Davenport. Uh, I write uh, middle grade fantasy. I'm sorry? Middle grade fantasy. So for kids like Harry Potter. Yeah. And um, in the series that I am working on now, it's a dragon writer series. And there's four different kinds of dragons that choose four different personality types, sort of like the Hogwarts houses. And um, Could you speak up just a little bit more? Okay, okay, I'll get closer to the mic. So um, the four different colors of dragons choose four different personality types, like the Hogwarts houses. And I was thinking of making like pins and plushies of the dragons. And when children take the test on my website, they can find out what kind of dragon to choose them. And then they can like identify with that color dragon and that, you know, the that kind of thing, just like in Hogwarts. Exactly. What kind of dragon are you? Exactly. <laughs> also, figurines for the dragons? Mm -hmm. 3D printed. My husband does 3D printing. <laughs> 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 when will I see pictures of him? Oh, I'm just starting the designs right now. Like when when, do, when do I see the, uh, the sketch art? Um, if you want, you can give me your email. I can shoot them to you. Yes, but I also want them publicly because what you're going to do is share this with people to get them engaged in what you're doing. I'll get into that after we cover this, but mm -hmm. let me know when you're wanting to do that. Sure. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. What's your name? Winter. Um, nice, because that's, that's far better than autumn. Hold on, let me adjust this for you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so I'm writing an urban fantasy, paranormal. Mm -hmm. And as I'm writing, I've actually already been thinking about this. So my main character is a latent shifter from another dimension who I'm lives sorry, in... I'm sorry, say that sentence one more time. She's a latent shifter who lives in San Diego, but she's from another dimension. Which means she's always been from San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so okay. she was born in Shifter and Fey World. And we call that Encinitas, go ahead. And she has an amulet that allows her to call the other world, as well as transfer through the phone to the other world. So she has an intergalactic smartphone. Yeah. Yes. Um, but she actually has to use the telephone um, from our world. So it's just like, it's just the way to call. So she has an intergalactic hotspot. <laughs> <laughs> and then on her wrist that she doesn't know, she has a bracelet. And a smartwatch. <laughs> and you don't find out till the end, but it's the bracelet that's preventing her from shifting. Nice. So what three products have I just heard when you gave me that example? I only heard of two, but <laughs> the amulet and the bracelet. The amulet, the smartphone cover, and um, the band for the Apple Watch, which has the same design on it. Yeah. Or even a skin that you can put on there. Those are, those are inexpensive too, inexpensive to make, and they can share with them. Does it change or does it have any kind of distinct features on it? So the amulet is like turquoise and multicolor and unique shaped. Um, and the bracelet gets warm whenever she attempts to shift and doesn't realize that that's the reason why she can't shift. It's color changing. Okay. 
I'm sorry. I, I'm not, I don't know if, these are, if that's your idea or not, but this is what's coming through my mind when you're saying that. You can take them and leave them because you're a grown woman, that's yours. But yeah. when, what I want you guys to leave with is a way of thinking through your stuff that's inventive and kind of self-indulgent and knowing that you are very capable and you should do that. Thank you so much, Winner. Thank you. Winner, we've been saying over here, we'll buy that. We'll yeah. That. <laughs> well, I'm looking for beta readers, readers too. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> right for those of you who are watching me in the future, people are actually trying to buy Winter's merch right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. What's your name? Hi, I'm Kirsten. Hi, Kirsten. Um, I write historical fantasy about Atlantis. Uh -huh. And one of my other avocations is divination, you know, tarot, rune stones, things like that. So I was thinking, invent a divination system for Atlantis, like a set of rune stones. So I've been working on that, and I thought one day I could mer merchandise them. Mm -hmm. you know, make a set of rune stones, 3D print them or whatever. Yes. This is one of the symbols, so I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm not going to pull your mask over your face. <laughs> but I do want you to come here and turn around. And what, what are you showing me? Um, it's just a little... Am I towards the camera? Is this a little oval that... Um, Don't say just, because this is your world. This symbolizes, like, the magic power of Atlantis. And I was looking for this symbol, and I saw this online, and I was thinking, you'll know it when you see it. And I saw it, and, like, that's it. Mm -hmm. So I start use this as, like part of the system, and I wear it, you know, like for a good luck charm for me. Make sure you always tell that story. Yeah. Right? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> My pleasure. What's your name, friend? Hi, I'm Cami Jansen. Hey, Cami. So I write YA portal fantasy, and because I cater to kids, when I designed my character, I always pictured kids running around in Halloween costumes. So very specific about what people are wearing, their magic system, they can enchant their swords to the elementals. So a water sword, a stone sword, a fire sword, that kind of thing. But I also have ideas for um, character specific stuff. So I have a genie that lives in a silver rattle. Cammie, can I stop you very quickly? Of course. Do you need to take a breath? No, I'm just <clears throat> not enough sleep. <laughs> that's a big old Anybody move. Anybody else with me, just not enough sleep, that, 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 that's that, where I am. You were not even alone in that. Okay, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure because your voice was shaking, I'm like, they got a breath. You're yeah, it's literally just not enough sleep. That and I had uh, chocolate almonds for lunch, so I'm probably a little jittery. <laughs> big old mood. <laughs> All right, so we have a bunny in the bottle? Uh, Jeannie in oh, the sorry. bottle. It's, she's in a rattle, a silver rattle. And so um, when I go to conventions and sell my book, mm -hmm. I have a little magic test that I give to people to draw them into my table. Yes. And I have a sign that says free magic test. And the people just come to me and say, what's a free magic test? Mm -hmm. And then I've got all of these little items that if they pick that item, then that's what kind of a magic they have. So like the genie and the rattle, if they pick the rattle and it shakes because there's a little rumble pack inside it, Right. Then that makes them uh, a summoner, so they can summon powerful. And I've got an item for every magic test. Oh, good. Do you have a little, now that you know you are a summoner, what this <laughs> yes. means, you, you take it with them, they can take yep. it away with them? Yes. And they read all the other magic, because they're all on the same paper. And oh. then hopefully they get excited about the book and read the book. And there's a QR ID code to your reader mag magnet or, or where they can yep. buy it? Yep. Everything is on that little sheet. I like it. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Kimmy. Hello, Jules. Hey. Introduce um, yourself for the folks. Uh, my name is Jules, and I write urban fantasy. Mm -hmm. And I have this idea of, well, like, it's not just an idea, but um, I have six tribes of werewolves, and then I have vampires, elves, and orcs. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to have them have it take a test. And then there's also jewelry and um, other kind of like wearables that go with each different tribe, elf, vampire, or orc. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say about it. 
Um, yeah, that's, I like jewelry, so I wanted to do jewelry, not just pins and things like that. I want jewelry. Are you familiar with jeweler's illustrations? Who's? Jeweler illustrations. Yes. Those really high detail ones that always look like they drew it mm -hmm. with um, colored pencils. Yep. Do we have any of those that you can share? Not yet. I thought about it last night and I Googled. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I Googled I know, right? crystals this morning. That's as far as I got. I was like, crystals seem great. I like crystals. <laughs> <laughs> so when do we get to see them? Um, when I make them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is that I'm asking you this, and I'm going to ask you all this. We're going to discuss this in the second part. Um, we have to set goals. Yes. And when, when we want to sit up there and get the stuff out. Because yes. without that, we would like, oh, that sounds good. I'll do it one day. Yeah, my first step is to do the test first. Mm -hmm. I've got a kind of idea of each house um, I have, or each tribe. I've got the six tribes down already. Mm -hmm. I have the idea for the elves. They're like really bougie. They love, <laughs> <laughs> they like um, clear crystals and pearls. So mm -hmm. I want like breastplates for the elves and like really gaudy jewelry, just like gaudy, gaudy stuff for the, right. <laughs> for the elves. It's like um, South Beach, like Jersey Shore. No, like, like really, really bougie glamorous Jersey Shore. <laughs> so Paris Hilton, is, is she still a thing? Yes, yes. Okay, Black like Paris Doja Hilton. Cat, that's even better. Cause she, oh, no, I don't let like me Doja not Cat. say that. <laughs> 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 All right, then. And then I have the dark stuff for the, uh, for the vampires like um, Jasper and um, Black. So mm -hmm. like not as gaudy, but still expensive. Right. And then orcs are leather and then the, um, the werewolves are all crystals, so it's like white, clear crystals, you know, whatever, just crystals. Like, so design. I expect to see a style book for all of this. Yes. Cool. I'm going to let her go through because i got 17 minutes. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, what's your name? Hi, I'm, I'm Alex. I write... Um, Thank you. I'm, I'm trying. There we go. Um, I write young adult urban fantasy. Uh-huh. Um, and my main character is... Um, She's actually born to a magic family, but she's magicless. She doesn't have any powers. Mm -hmm. um, and in a weird experiment, somebody kidnaps her and, and brands her um, with magical symbols, which is theoretically impossible in their magic world to, mm -hmm. to Give put power. magic on a person. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to turn that into like temporary tattoos of some type. Yes. <laughs> I love that idea. Just because I want to indoctrinate kids early and getting their spells <laughs> marked. Oh, if, if I could get like some, you know, you worship the devil, that'd be great. I'd love it. <laughs> That's just like me wanting, I know I arrived when there's slash fan fiction in Shaman State. I'm just waiting for that moment. Thank you so much, Helen. Thank you. Hey. Hi. What's your name? My name's Kim. I write urban fantasy. Um, my first book in my series is called Dragons Don't Eat Meat. And my... Since when? That's the thing. It's not about veganism. They, they eat magic. So my main character is a pest controller of fake creatures. My books are all about the critters. They're all c evil and that cute. That gave me so much joy. I'm sorry. <laughs> so they're all evil and cute in equal proportions. And so naturally, there's plushies going to be involved in this. But I'd like to take it further than that. Wait a minute. What's the name of the company that, that, the pest control company? Valkyrie Bestiary. And does he have a work shirt with his name on it? I do have a logo right now, but it's not a custom one. I just, something I took off a royalty free site, and I think I'm going to actually have some art done and do Send that. me that link. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I also collect work shirts, you know, because I'm a maker. Yeah. And there's all these used places where you can get a work shirt, and it's like Dale or Earl with two yeah. E's or something like that. Yeah, and it is mentioned in the book quite a bit that her shirt, that's what she wears. She's not girly. She's always in this plaid work shirt with her logo. So I could definitely do that. But what I really want to do is that the, the, the little dragon in it, he eats a magical relic, and they spend the rest of the book sorting through his poop looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> One of my reviewers said, I've never thought that looking through poop would be so suspenseful. <laughs> Will there be a poop plushie with the thing? Well, I would that like you can pull to, out yeah, <laughs> little chocolate or, I don't know, I, I want to incorporate that somehow, maybe a little stone in his back pocket, you never know which one you're going to get, you know, that sort of thing. 
Yes. <laughs> so, I am so proud of you. <laughs> Anybody have companies that make chocolate poo? <laughs> we can research that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kim. That pleased me deeply. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Ariel. So I write. Ariel Marie? Yeah. Oh, oh. I write that's for, what you look like. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I see. None of our um, profile pics match our faces. Yeah. So I write uh, paranormal romance under Ariel. So I went to the talk yesterday. So after I left that one, I've been like brainstorming, like, what could I do? Good. So for my vampire book I just released that I'm about to do the whole series on, mm -hmm. it starts, well, it was going to start following the three princesses, the daughters of the king. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, I want to play on like the family's crest you know, come out with like jury. I already have like some stuff I give away for swag, but I want something that's more than just, you know, something I give away at book signings and Correct. stuff. So something like that. Um, and then each book cover has a different symbol on it. So for the one book that just came out, it has a crown on it. So I want to play on the crown and maybe get like little crowns made. The second book has an iced heart. Right. So I want to do some, maybe some type of like crystal heart and stuff. Right. And then they each, of course, are like badass warriors, you know, because, yeah, they just finished the post-human vampire war. So each of the sisters fight, of course, because, you know. And what weapon do they use? Yeah, so I'm thinking to play off of each one of their weapon of choice and doing something like that. But then real quick for my romantic suspense, under my other pen name, mm -hmm. I have a super popular SWAT series. And everybody has their favorite SWAT member. So I'm thinking maybe, like when I was a kid, I did like basketball cards. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking maybe like cards with each of the characters. And then I just added onto the team a female SWAT officer, yeah. which everybody went crazy over. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe play to that. So like maybe have some type of maybe a badge for them, um, mm -hmm. the trading cards yeah. with all of the guys, you know, their stats former military, you know, all their background and stuff. Right. And like build off of that. And sharing that on your site, giving the stats or asking your group, hey, what kind of stats do you think they should have? Yeah. And <laughs> you're like, oh my God. Well, yeah, they are. I'm like, every time I release a new book, they'll still say, well, no, Mac is still my favorite, but I do like Ed, you know, so, <laughs> so it just depends. But that's one of the things that they all, you know, compete over is who's the better SWAT member. Oh. You know, so I'm like, if you have a trading cards and chuck cards, then it's sort of like, you know, going off of that. That sounds great. Yeah. Ooh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Felita Daniels, and I just came up with this idea in the chairs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. A short story for an anthology I'm doing next year. I have a witch, and her familiar is a dragon, but of mm -hmm. course that makes it hard to get her moving around. So it's a teacup dragon. <gasps> So I was thinking, what about a purse? And that's going to be the teacup dragon's home. Yes. The question is, yes. that's more of a grown-up item, and the stories are adult. So would that I'm work? sorry. It, the purse is a grown-up item? I'm wondering if the merchandise, if, if grown-up mm -hmm. women would buy a purse with a little teacup dragon in it, or would that seem more childlike? Okay, first of all, the audience is already answering for you. And then, right? Okay, before, uh, uh, give me two minutes, Jules. Um, can I tell you about my purse collection as I walk over because I'm expensive? I have a purse that looks like a um, carton of strawberry milk. I have one that's shaped like Pusheen. I have one that, that just looks like a ba bomb from Mario. <laughs> if you connect in a way that reflects what they see in themselves, like that area of cute or that bit of nostalgia, right? A teak, who wouldn't want a little purse that had a little dragon sitting out there like a Scotty? <laughs> I would buy all three of them. And if you give me a different plushie and match the purse, I will buy all three and my husband will just shake his head. You're welcome. Oh, 
Unfortunately, we can't push in. Can't. No, but it's a lovely dragon on this page. <laughs> oh, can you see it a little bit? Great. So we have all these ideas, right? And don't we, now that we thank you, now that we've talked about it, do you feel better about those ideas? It pushes, it pushes through the imposter syndrome when you can sit up there and be in a room like, I think I wanna do this. Now, you and I will actually do this, right? What do you need to actually create the merch? Well, first, you would have to have an idea, right? And then from there, if it is something custom, um, and you, I'm gonna separate this between, okay, I'm gonna separate between those who are designers and design things themselves, and those who will have to hire out and design things. Um, because the cost is substantial, but it's different. For our designers, for those of us who create things and make things, it is a lot of time, whereas those who want to produce but don't want to design, it costs a lot of money, right? When you decide that you're gonna make merch, along with making sure you fulfill their needs, make sure it, these needs that you're fulfilling and these things line up with the needs of your characters, at least one that they care about. And you might want to sit up there and talk to your audience about um, what do you think they need? What do you think they will want? Because what we're trying to do is engage an audience. We want them, even if it's like two of them, right? Two people bought the book and you ask them, they're like, well, we would like this, right? You are engaging. You're asking them and they feel now they are invested in this. They belong now. And as you go through, and you may make a lot of mistakes, you may have to save up money, you may not like what, you, like what you're doing, but as you are gathering this information, you are telling your people about it. If you look at my, um, my TikToks and my Instagrams, it's a bunch of Projects in process, right? This is what I'm doing for the Caramel Sugar Evil 2021 Christmas card. And I've already put up about four um, drawings that I hate. I think I've come up on the one, but we'll see after I come back from Vegas, right? Showing the process of doing this, asking their opinion, right? And then when it is available, giving it to them, offering it to them. And what happens? They wear it, and they want to tell somebody else about it, right? Or they wear it, and somebody asks them, what's that? And what do they do? I, no, you got to raise your hand. <laughs> then it's, oh, you got to read this book, because let me tell you, this is where this comes from, and, and now you got some new readers. What do you want? your readers telling other people about? Everything. Maybe. I, for instance, I want people to know that in Shaman States America, they can see themselves reflected. No matter who you are, you should be able to pick up a book in my collection, which is 36 strong, and keep on going and find your slice of life or your slice of life adjacent. And you do that by always having instances in your books and always having experiences in your books where even though they're going through the hardest things, they satisfy one of those needs. And the more often you do this, you will find that um, those are the things that people cling to most. One example, the most popular character in my series is a lady named Dorothea Fallow. They call her Dottie. And Dottie is, is, she owns a chain of restaurants, and she's the only waitress for them, and they're called the Dot and Dash. Now, the wonderful thing about the Dot and Dash, other than the fact that it's been around for almost 300 years, and Dottie's been there the entire time, <laughs> is that in a world of monster hunting, where you go out as a team, and you fight this thing, and you're gonna get busted up, right? 
If you find that you need to eat, to recover, to do things, all you have to do is think about going there and travel 10 minutes. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what mode of transportation you're in. 10 minutes and you are safe. 10 minutes and you're eating. And her tagline, we're always nearby. <laughs> right? What does that, what does that sink into? Belonging, safety. And every last character, every last writer that writes with me has their favorite dot and dash scenario because they always go back. It's like, are you sure it's 10 minutes? Like, ten? no, 10 minutes, no matter where they are. So we've had a dot and dash in a submarine. We've had a dot and dash in the middle of the Kansas woods. If you can call them woods, it was like Kansas Valley. We had a food truck run alongside of somebody. <laughs> because it's important that you know, even in the darkest places, if you hold on and can last for 10 minutes, someone will reach their hand out to you. And that's important. I have three minutes left. And so what I want to do is this. The way that my name is spelled in the program is the way you find me on Facebook. And on Instagram, it's either essentially CKH or Caramel Sugar Evil, which is the name of my, both the in-universe Hot Topic type store that folks buy stuff and my actual store, sugarevil.com. That's another thing. Build a store or a restaurant inside your universe and then just sell things. <laughs> I want you to tag me as you're going through this, as you're building your world and building the items in it. I want to see what you come up with, and I will do the same, right? And the hope is that when I give this talk next year, which I think I have enough whiskey and blackmail material to convince Craig to do, <laughs> that we will have an exchange. I will have 100 boxes of my swag, and I will exchange it one for one for the swag you bring in next year. Can we do that? Yeah. <laughs> Great. If you want to see what I'm doing, I'm rebuilding shamanstates.com, but you can always come down, uh, go down there. And then, like I said, follow me on Instagram and find me on TikTok. I'm still Caramel, um, Caramel Sugar Evil there, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Thank you so much. You could have spent your time and your dream with anybody else, but you're here with me. And that is everything. Good night.